Hey guys, I was hoping to post a video saying I'd finally figured out everything to begin selling Bella Scissors. However, I've hit another roadblock. But before I get to that, let's talk about the good stuff I've done. Lucas from Squid Industries has been very helpful during the process of making the Bell Scissors. I wanted to send him a prototype to test, but I felt like I should wait until I had a pair of scissors with hardened blades and anodized handles. In January, he convinced me to just send some Bell Scissors as they were. And I'm glad I did. He sent me this video. He's way better at flipping than me, so this gave me a huge boost in confidence in my design. I was worried he'd have issues with the button and the mechanism. To my surprise, when I asked him for feedback, his suggestions were fairly minor. Jimping on the spacers, a bigger chamfer or radius on the edge of the handles, maybe different screws, stuff like that. The design of the aluminum handles was only meant to be simple for prototyping, so these were easy changes to make. He also said he could help me do an anodizing sample, so I sent him a few scrap handles too. I had him bead blast one of the handles so I could see what different finishes look like. Both of these finishes are okay, but what I've been wanting to do for a long time is tumble parts. So I finally got a tumbler. They recommended I use these ceramic triangles for tumbling 7075 aluminum. They seem to work pretty well. It takes about an hour and a half to get rid of the tool marks. The shiny appearance from the mill is cool, but it's not consistent and can easily scratch. After tumbling, I got the parts anodized in town. This time I did black, and they also came out pretty good. I wasn't 100% sold on the tumbled look, but after anodizing it looks very consistent and still looks a little glossy. The reason I've tried black and red is because those are two colors you can't really get when anodizing titanium. Anodizing aluminum is more complicated than anodizing titanium, so it's not something I can do myself. I think these came out good. The only issue is, I got the impression anodizing adds a half thou of material to your parts. So I tried to give them parts that compensated for that. But this set of scissors came out loose, so I guess that was a mistake. Another thing I wanted to try was engraving the handles. Coming up with cool patterns has always been my favorite thing to machine. So I experimented a little. I have a lot of ideas. Some of these patterns can double the time it takes to make a handle. I'm not sure if it's something I'll be able to do on every pair of scissors. So I tried a less crazy design too. Last time I gave the parts to the anodizer, I kind of just crammed them in random containers. I thought I should start figuring out how to manage bigger quantities of parts. I 3D printed a little test tray, but I didn't think there was really enough room for my fingers. I printed one with more space that I liked better. Now there's less temptation to just dump it all out. I made similar ones for blades, spacers, and buttons. The printers were taking like 14 hours, so I tried using Maker's Muse's faster print settings, which were able to cut print times in half. I also made a tray that holds every part for a pair of scissors. I put the parts in their new trays, and I went back to the anodizer. And this time, everything seems to be the correct size. I think I'm happy with how the geometric patterns came out anodized, but I wasn't happy with how the text engraving looked. It was difficult to see, and the anodizing made it worse. I decided to try laser engraving. I found a company in town to do it, and I'm very happy with the results. I'm surprised how crisp it looks. And yep, I'm patent pending. That was a difficult process that took up a lot of my time last year. When I finally get approved or rejected, I'll probably make a video about it. Okay, let's talk blades. Last video, I made some big improvements to making blades. I was doing tests with A2 steel, but on the real scissors, I want to pick something that won't rust. So I got more CPM 154 blanks laser cut. But this time, I also got them double disc ground, which means they're very flat and much closer to the correct thickness. I made a new Op 1 palette for these blanks. Then Op 2, I clean them up a bit more, and I countersink half the blades. Then I tap the others. Then I heat treated the blades. 
Then I even surface ground the blades to really make sure they're flat and on size. Because they're hardened, and I'm only taking off a small amount of material, this went much better than in the past. I then hard milled the outer contour and pinholes to the correct size. Then I hard milled the bevel. Lastly, I slot the tabs so I can snap them off. I got another new machine too. It's a horizontal belt grinder. I thought it might be perfect for these blades. I can clean up the extra material left from the tabs on two of the different wheels. Then I can tumble the blades. I'm still kind of figuring this out, but this big ultra aggressive media seems to be able to remove tool marks in the hardened steel in a few hours. All that's left to do is sharpen the blades. I made a little jig I can put the blade in. There's also a couple screws I can use to keep it square against this third platen. The platen has its own fence, but I thought if I shift things over, I'm even less likely to grind into the wrong part of the blade. But now, I can sharpen the whole edge in one shot and not worry about grinding a curve into the blade. The disadvantage is only one section of the belt gets worn down at a time. I can raise and lower the platen to a new area when needed. I'm just trying to go slow anyway. I got a variable speed drive for this reason. I could tell when I got a sharp edge when it would catch on my fingernail. Then I could put everything together. I also was able to find a company in town to make pins for me, which means now I have stainless pins. And I got custom washers a little while ago. Everything seems pretty good. Scissors have a little bend in the blades to make them cut better. These blades have stayed flatter than any other blades throughout the whole process. But when I milled the bevels, they bent. Luckily, they bent in the right direction. So the scissors cut pretty good. Maybe better than any other scissors I've made. I thought I was done. I figured it all out and now I just have to make a bunch. So that's what I tried to do. I made more blades doing the exact same steps and I ended up with super bent blades. Like I could fit a 45,000 shim underneath. Not only were they bad as scissors, the bend was making them not able to flip like a battle song. Try it again, and I got the same results. Bending them back after hardening may be possible, but I think there's a limit and it's probably difficult. Double disc grinding, quench plates, surface grinding. I've done everything to keep them as flat as possible. And yet somehow these are the most warped blades I've ever made. <sighs> I thought I must have just got lucky the first time and that I didn't have a reliable process. So I decided to try something different. I decided to have someone else heat treat the blades. Right now, it seems like my biggest bottleneck for selling scissors is heat treating. It's always a full day of work and I can only do eight at a time but I'm worried I'm getting worse results the more I do at once. So I thought I should at least try sending some blades out to a heat treating company with big vacuum furnaces. And here's the blades I got back. You can see the blades haven't discolored at all. Also, unlike my attempts, none of the holes warped, but I did get an extra hole somehow. Maybe that's my fault for making it too thin. I'll just ignore that for now. I did four blades with no bevel, two with rough bevels, and two with finished bevels. I had high hopes on the finished bevels. It would be nice if I could skip hard milling the bevels, but the blades came back with a bend in the wrong direction. At least it's not 45 thou bend, but bend in this direction makes them not work as scissors. And it was the same issue with the rough ones. So I tried machining a couple of the blanks with no bevel. I was hoping the process they used might have put less stress into the steel, but there was no improvement. At this point, I was pretty sure the problem was that I was removing too much material from only one side. By having a bevel the way I do, I'm removing a lot of stress in one side, but not the other. If it was a knife, I'd machine a bevel on the other side too, and it'd even out. But I can't do that for scissors. Maybe I could shrink the bevel, but I'd rather not. I decided to see what would happen if I machined the rough beveled blades. It's already lost most of that material before heat treat, so I'd think that removing only around 10 thou of material shouldn't cause much change in the bend that it has. But it did! The bend direction flipped, and not only that, 
it bent too much and looks like all the other blades. So I don't think it has much to do with how much material I'm removing. I think it's a heat problem. I got new sharp tools and this time I tried machining the bevel with coolant and it came out way flatter. So I ran another one, also flat. But then I ran two more which warped. <sighs> the reason I wasn't using coolant is it's apparently bad for tool life when hard milling. Hard milling makes a lot of heat and quenching it with the coolant thermally shocks the tool. I think that's what happened. I ran lots of blades with air and eventually the tool got dull, which means more heat and so it started warping blades. Then I used a new tool with coolant and it probably got dull even faster. So I'm a bit frustrated, but there's some hope. I can try better tools and tool paths, I could try a different steel, and maybe I can work with a heat treating company to keep things bent the right way. So I'm still not done, but the good news is there's not much left to do. Thanks for watching. See ya.